Welcome back, everybody, to Local Scene Podcast. Today we are here with Austin McCauley, and we're going to see, you know, get a little background on him and the car he has and, you know, his entire role. So, Austin, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. So, obviously, people in Valdosta know you with the Roush Mustang sitting behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about your car? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a 2005 Roush Stage 3 Mustang. Um, I got it at three years ago, maybe three and a half years ago. Didn't look nothing like it does now, but a little bit different. Um, it had like 80,000 miles on it, 90,000 miles on it, and uh, been driving it for a while. Did the hood on it, uh, got some psycho, did some paint on it. He did the paint on the hood. He did the paint on the, the front bumper. Uh, we redid some of the stripes because some of the stripes were painted on. Um, so we had to do some of that. Um, changed the seats out. Um, Michael Carver did some painting on the uh, the inside. He painted like the supercharger and the, the valve mm -hmm. cover, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Abneil did a bunch of work to the car because we had some belt slip issues and um, fixed those for a while. Having belt slip issues again, working on fixing that. Um, but uh, as far as parts that are on it, um, it's got Cook's long tube headers. Um, did muffler deletes, resonator deletes. Um, still got the cats just because. Didn't want it to be too crazy loud. I wanted to be able to drive it and enjoy it somewhat on the interstate. Right. True, true. Yeah, don't have it be terrible drones. Yeah, and um, it's got some uh, 2010 Shelby GT500 style wheels. Um, they're 285s in the back, 255s in the front. Um, I'm trying to think. It's got the obviously the Roush suspension that comes with it. It's got. Uh, I think oh, it's got a, uh, the lowest pulley you can put on the Eaton mm -hmm. supercharger, the mm -hmm. 2.49, which I think is what's causing the belt slip issues. I think uh, so. Cordon, you know, me and Jaleel talked about it a little bit. He thinks that could be just wearing out and it's overspinning and belt yeah. slipping on it. So yeah. we're yeah, going to try to fix that. Uh, uh, did the interior, sorry, the interior, I deleted all the, the stock seats. Um, did a rear seat delete. Did a uh, Braum uh, harness bar. Did the NRG racing seats um, psycho custom made the bracket for those because couldn't find a bracket for my year model car so mm -hmm. did that and then uh you know got the harness the harnesses that's about it you know not really much else mm -hmm. i mean it's stock other than that other than that <laughs> other than, stock other than that <laughs> stock is stock ish sure oh man. yeah i remember the first time i saw that car i was like that's uh interesting gt <laughs> yeah and yeah and then i pulled up on it, i was like okay that's not a gt <laughs> yeah it technically the, was the funny story about buying that car is um the guy who had it didn't know what it was oh really so when i asked him i, I was on messages i saw it on facebook messenger and all i saw was the front bumper uh -huh. I, I was very familiar with what a um the Roush front bumper was i was like that might be a Roush. so i clicked on it he didn't have the windshield banner on it mm -hmm. he didn't have any of the stuff and um, I asked him, I was like, I sent him a text and was like, hey, can I see a picture of the engine? Because I knew if it was a stage three, I didn't want a stage one. If it was right. a stage three, I'd have a supercharger. And uh, the guy replied with, uh, engine's there, runs good. And we come to find out he didn't speak a lick of English. Like, he just barely broke in English, everything he did. Uh. So I actually had a, tr a buddy of mine translate for me and talk to him and ask him questions. And then he showed me a picture of it. I was like, yes. So I, actually <laughs> got, I actually got the car for $9,000. Wow. Um, what? Yeah. And um, we were actually looking yesterday on Facebook Marketplace, wrong. and because um, he didn't know what he had, yeah, um, and yeah. he just wanted to get rid of it. There were some mistakes on the car, like it was painted. It needs a, it needs a new paint job, which I'm working on. Um, and the only thing that's been painted is the front half of the car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the back half still has some paint chips and stuff that I'm working on. Little small stuff that I recognize. Most people don't see it. All right. That's how it always is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Perfectionist of your own car. Yeah. yeah, and then, uh, but yeah, went up there and bought it, and as soon as he said 9,000, I was gone. I was like, I'm on the way. So, <laughs> yeah, went and bought it, and I was actually looking at a higher mileage one in Jacksonville for 16,000 the same day. Oof. And I was like, saw that one, and I, I, like, even if it had some stuff wrong with it, yeah. it's worth the 9,000. I wish I could have so, found a Mustang definitely. for 9K. Yeah. Shoot, I wish I just had a Mustang. So, Abigail, <laughs> Abigail just sent me on Facebook Marketplace, uh -huh. he sent me yesterday. A uh, stage one in Jacksonville for sale for fifteen. Wow! It's freshly painted, yeah. got a lot of mods on it. Yeah. But it's still a stage one, no yeah. supercharger, no nothing for fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited about mine. So. Didn't you have a uh, what was the one you had before that? 
The Roush? Yeah. I so I had, an, I had an 07 Stage 3 Roush. It was a Roush okay. 427R. Okay. Um, I sold that for, uh, to be adult. <laughs> to be an adult? <laughs> yeah. Pay, buy a house and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And um, funny story with that also kind of was when I sold that car, I, was, I, I really wanted to... I had to make sure I'd make some adult stuff and I was paying like a ridiculous amount of car payments and insurance and everything with that car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when I sold it, I told myself that I was like, I'm going to get my bills right. I'm going to get my finances right. And I'm going to buy another one because I really love that car. Yeah. And of um, searched and searched. Took me about, I sold it in 2013. I bought this in 2020. It's about five or six years. Mm-hmm. Finances, went through a couple different cars. Yeah. Um, couldn't find one of these. When I finally found one, it was this one. And just it was just like a it was like a I did this accomplishment like I finally got my car back and I know yeah, it ain't mm-hmm. much to, some people it ain't much to buy a nine thousand dollar car or whatever but this car means more to me than just a right. than just what it is it's oh, not yeah. it's not a it's not a 2005 Mustang me it was something that I had to accomplish yeah. to, to do so. exactly and yeah, yeah. you know I go to car shows with um, my dog Oakley mm-hmm. I, I bring him with me and uh, yeah, speaking of which where's he at today. He is at the house. Uh, we brought him to the car meet last night, and I wore him out, so I didn't feel like dealing with him today. And um, but he's my riding partner. He goes to all the car shows as long as I don't get too tired of him. Um, he gets hair all over my car, which is a pain in the butt, but I clean it every time and try to keep it clean. So, mm-hmm. but I enjoy him. He he loves the car. Um, mm-hmm. Yesterday he wouldn't get out of the car. <laughs> I would go to one side of the car, and he'd jump Just to the other side of the car, and he would go back and forth. Yeah. Yep. Um, when I had my other cars, my other trucks that I didn't mind him riding in. When I washed them, he would sit inside the cars. So I would wash them, and then he would sit inside the whole time. And then when I'd open the door to get out, I had to drag him out of the car every time. So he, he'll, he'll hop in any car with the door open. Oh, yeah. He's, he's yeah. jumped in mine a couple times. Um, but he, <laughs> he goes to the car shows. Everybody loves him. I mean, I've, yeah. I, if I go to this car show with Alan, people ask me, you know, why am I here without the dog? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, in fact, at the Cook County show yesterday, like four people stopped me and was like, why did you come without Oakley? So. Well, he's such a good-behaved dog. He's, he's the yeah. star of the show. Right? Um. He's not trained. Like he, I, people see me walk around with him without a leash. Yeah. Never trained him to do that. I've never taught him that. It's just, I. That's how he. That's how he is. He's just. He follows yeah. me everywhere I go. Um, I rescued him from the pound the day before he was supposed to be put down. Um, that's paid forty five dollars for him. Yeah. Got a bag of dog food. Yeah. Bowls, all kind of toys, and there you go. been with him about. I got him in twenty. My my other dog passed away in twenty twenty one, and I took him to all the car shows. Yeah, and mm-hmm. people from the Steak and Shake days remember he rode with me everywhere, and it was almost similar to Oakley. He would follow me around. He played with everybody, but um, he got hit by a car in twenty twenty or twenty twenty one. So I got Oakley a couple of days later. I couldn't go without having a dog. So yeah, yeah, no, of course. Had to get one. Absolutely. So that's, that's that's that. Yeah. Huh. And how old is Oakley? Oakley is two, almost three years old. I think he's three and a half, three. Three like and that. a half? Yeah. Jeez, I believe he was a year and a half when I got him, and I've had him for like two years. Mm-hmm. So. And what kind of dog is he? American, he's a, he's a, he's a mutt. He's American bull, Bulldog. I don't have any papers on him, obviously. I got him from the panel. Yeah. yeah. But American Bulldog, I think he has some pit bull in him, but mainly I think he's American Bulldog. Okay. So yeah. he's chunky. Yeah. So he's, like, he's a chunk, big boy. He's a chunky boy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's one of the yeah. sweetest dogs I've ever met. Yeah. So you mentioned that with your old dog, some people from the old Steak and Shake days might remember. Uh, what what got you into the car scene here? Oh, um, not just the car scene. Like, get me into cars altogether. Um, I've always been into cars. So, like, even as a kid, riding around, like, 10, 11, 12 years old, I remember riding in the car. We used to live in Louisiana. And I would ride around in the cars, and I would name out cars. Like, I'd see a, a Mitsubishi Eclipse, but at the time, the Eclipse was, like, my favorite car. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just obviously i don't know it's not that great of a car as far as reliability and all that stuff but to a 10 year old kid when i saw it oh yeah the mitsubishi clip spiders and all that stuff are like yeah. my favorite i would freak out if i saw one and not knowing they were you know seven or eight thousand dollar cars yeah. to me they were just a cool looking car yeah. and i loved them and um as i got older i started to learn more about engines and reliability mm-hmm. and then i was like okay that's not that great of a car yeah, yeah. But you see Josh Vanderbilt's. Yeah, yeah. Several, like certain cars. Yeah, there's yeah. there's certain models that have been cleaned up. But I'm, my my favorite one was like the 01 to 03. The the Gen the like Gen, Gen two or whatever. Three, it is. I think it was. Whatever. Yeah, it was Gen three. Yeah, with the soft yeah. top. Yeah. yeah. The older ones. Yeah. The yeah. The, the, the the purple one for Too Fast Too Furious. The one that gave you a V6. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. purple one. Yeah. Too Fast Too Furious. Yeah. I loved that one. Yeah. I just I was like they put my favorite car in a movie. <laughs> um, but I was too young to watch my parents because you know when, I, when Need for Speed came out I was only like ten years old. Mm-hmm. And um, they uh, had issues 
um, with you know the, the the contents of that one for like nine or ten year old kid to watch it. So I didn't watch it till a couple years later, and I loved. I got into customizing cars like right then, like the yeah. neon lights and yep. all that stuff. And I was already naming every car that went down the road. Yeah. I was naming. If, I, if you saw it, I just pointed. I'd be like, "That's that car." Yep. And I still do it to this day. I still ride around like I know what car that is. I'm naming. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, um, think I'm the same way. <laughs> but then I, I've had a ton of cars. I've had. I think this car is like my twenty fourth car, twenty third car, and I'm, I'm thirty two. Jeez. But uh, I've bought. So many different cars, but my first car that got me into like customizing it was um, I bought a 2001, 2002 Mustang V6 convertible. Mm-hmm. And I remember I'm going to AutoZone and going through all the little cool like neon lights you plug into uh, the cigarette lighter and stuff. Uh, to me, it was a, it was it was you know <laughs> yeah, was 18, it's cool. It was a first car. It, was okay. a, it wasn't a first car, but Their it was first it was like a thing. first thing yeah. mod. Yeah, um, I remember going to putting the exhaust over an advanced muffler. I had them put some cheap uh, fake Flowmasters on it, <laughs> and um, get that nice little. It was just something I could exit. afford and do. And then um, I started watching YouTube videos on people with new edge Mustangs, and then I, I was like, I got to get a GT. So I actually sold it to a guy who I've still seen in town all the time, my V6, and then uh, bought a. 2004 Mustang GT, uh, like 30,000 miles on it. Damn. First manual car. Couldn't drive a manual when I bought it. I had driven my brother's uh, Ford Ranger, and he taught me a little bit how to drive stick, but I never actually drove it on the road. Mm-hmm. So I, I couldn't even drive my, my first car, my, my first manual car, until like a couple weeks later when I practiced going around the neighborhood a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. But my dad had to drive it home for me because I couldn't drive it. He had to test drive it. He had to drive it. Everything. Jeez. Um, and then from there, that's when I bought the Roush, and then I had gto's and i've had all this stuff but going to those those steak and shake meets in my gt was one of the best experiences um going on there and we'd get up and we would meet up at the gas station we would all go to the car wash and then we'd go grab some food and then go to the steak and shake meet and just hang out and talk and this was 2013 2014 yeah. um, i don't know when they started but that's whenever i was introduced to it and it was just the best experience, just going out there and hanging out, and afterwards everybody going home, and you'd look forward to the next Saturday yeah. To, yeah. to go out there. So it was just a blast. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it must have been. Yeah, I remember when I got here in uh, fifteen, the steak and shake meets they were popping off. Oh, it was they were huge every month. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know. They were, they were. I have made so much memories from just that steak and shake parking lot mm-hmm. with. Um, I know everybody knows Jigger and, oh, and yeah, my buddy yeah. Josh and David Abneil at the time wasn't really friends with him but I, I knew him there yeah um, one of my favorite memories is watching Abneil race people in his SRT4 neon with four or five people <laughs> crammed in the car hanging out <laughs> windows and he's shifting not, not on back roads just right like, in front of Steak and Shake <laughs> just hitting it now everybody's just hanging out the windows Oh and God. just laughing because that thing is fast. Oh yeah, yeah. his his he almost fast. And any, anything fast. that he yeah. has is yeah pretty yeah. damn quick. He's he's good at doing that. Yeah, so there's a, I've, I've had so many fun memories there. Um, LJ, um, most people know as uh, LJ, but I actually have him saved on my phone as Blackberry. That was like that was just his his truck. He had a Ford Lightning, and it was yep. super fast. It was oh, okay. nice. Um, but that was not yeah. actually at Steak and Shake. We actually had a meet at Toys um, at Toys R Us back in the day. Mm. I forgot why we did it there. For some reason, we, we stopped there at that parking lot right there by Arby's. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget LJ leaving that parking lot. And he got on a little bit and got sideways and, and drifted around the little red light right there by Flash Foods going towards the interstate. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, all these cops start coming around the corner and oh. start taking off going his direction. And I called him on the phone. I was like, LJ you got like six cops coming your way and he was like oh man so he Punch took it. off and kind of find out this is after we found this out after the fact there was actually some kind of drug bust at the apartments across from the prison <laughs> and they were actually like chasing people through the woods oh god lj Damn. thought they were chasing him so, so he'll he, even tell you the story so he floored it he floored it down down 133 or some road back roads pulled off into some uh, cotton fields and parked oh my and then God. went the long way all the way around to go home. We took like an hour to get home. But um, <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't know it wasn't chasing him. Oh, oh man. <laughs> That's a good story. But Why does it not surprise me though is the thing. Yeah, yeah. he, uh, we got just good stories with a lot of people. And just the fact that I've met all these people like Psycho and LJ and Jigger who obviously isn't around these parts anymore. But um, mm-hmm. just a lot of people that I've met and been friends with for yeah. a long, long time. And um, like your brother, we knew him for a long time. I knew him before I knew you. Yeah. And just 
having that, that people you've known for so long, Justin Cruel, who used to hang out with us all the time yeah. back then, um, and he left and now he's back again. So just having all these people that you've known for so many years in the industry and the, oh, yeah. and the, and the scene, it's, mm-hmm. it's fun. Yeah. So everyone around town in the car scene, they know you as the camera guy, yeah. the photographer. <laughs> You're the one who's always running around, you got your little gimbal in your hands, and you're getting these shots, and you're doing all sorts of different things. You're doing the rolling shots, you're doing the light painting, yeah. which is probably one of the coolest things I've yeah. seen someone Yeah, it's probably do. one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is just, it's, get, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing, <laughs> like, what you can do with a camera, mm-hmm. but yeah. were you always that good with it? Like, how did you get started? Um, so when I started, and I remember when I first got a flip phone. My first phone that I ever got as a kid had a flip phone. Yeah. And it had a camera on it. And I remember just taking pictures of random stuff. Like, I was taking a picture of Coke cans, mm. um, whatever I could take a picture of. Trying to be aesthetic. Yeah, I would take a picture. I didn't really have a good night, a nice little car to take a picture of at the time. Mm-hmm. But I was taking pictures of, I'd be at a, at a table eating, and I'd find something to take a picture of. And just, and my parents just always said, you ever seen like a, a kid will color something no matter yeah. what the kids yeah look. it's like oh we'll I thought it's a great bridge. that's a great picture at the time i was like my parents were like oh, that's a great picture i'm like it's just you're just saying that just a little bit but, <laughs> and um as i got older i kind of didn't really take much pictures anymore when i got my mustang gt my 2004 um i actually got an iphone 2g i think was my first one and that was the first one that got like apps that yep. you could do like photography apps and stuff and i started taking pictures of it and um i have some pretty cool pictures from, my, from what I thought of at the time were pretty cool to take with a cell phone and I had like went in there and bought I had all these editing apps and I had like changed the sky colors yeah. and did all that stuff and then um, after a while I just enjoyed that just with cell phones didn't take it anywhere else you know for a real camera or anything like that and then um, decided one day I was like you know what I, I have my, my Roush and I want to take pictures of it so about three to four years ago, I bought a, uh, a real nice camera mm-hmm. and started taking pictures, just my car. It was just something that I enjoyed from my car as a mm-hmm. hobby. My dog at the time, Astro, um, taking pictures of him on the street and on walks and didn't do any videos, just pictures. And uh, started following people on YouTube that did really cool photography with cars and stuff. And um, then I was like, I got to do this. So my favorite YouTuber is Warshins Media. If you ever have a chance to check out his YouTube content, if I could be like half as good as he is uh-huh. at content, yeah, I would. I would be fine. I'd be happy. I think I follow him on Instagram. Oh, he's amazing. Uh, you got yeah. some of his content is just insane. Yeah. He's like he's like my idol. To I want to be as good as him one day. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's so funny. If you watch like his interviews, he you ask him like people will get in the comments like, you know, which which settings do you use on this? What what do you do on this? And he's like, I don't know cameras. He just does what looks good. He just does, he goes. It looks good, so I use it. That's so yeah. people are like, oh, do you use this setting or this setting? And he's like, I don't even know what those settings are. Yeah. He was like, I just I, I just experiment experiment and try what it is. And yeah. he goes, I don't know cameras. He goes, yeah. people ask me all the time, what is this camera better than this camera? He goes, I don't know. I use this camera right here. And yeah, he was exactly. like, I don't know what the rest of them. Are. I've never used anything else. <laughs> so he's he's so cool that he doesn't worry about knowing all the, the stats yeah. and the yeah. settings. He's and just in it to enjoy. He's it. just in it to enjoy it, and he does what looks good. He doesn't follow trends. He doesn't, he just, he does what he thinks looks good and it's, it's successful for him. Yeah, exactly. The carves his own um, path. So yeah, then I started taking, <laughs> yeah, um, I started taking pictures and then I, that's how I met Michael Carver is I was taking pictures of some friends doing dirt bikes, jumps and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Michael Carver was a friend of a friend and so I started taking pictures with him and he was like, dude, I got a Mustang, you know, I'd like to get a video of it. Yeah. And pictures. So that's when I filmed my first video and pictures and and obviously i think they sucked um and it was my first time ever doing something like that and then I, that video still on my youtube and was that I, the uh, infamous first flame shoot no 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 he didn't no? shoot flames back then this was his car was pretty much stopped back then okay he had like lowering springs or this something. wasn't this wasn't after he cracked his wheel on the no that was before <laughs> way before that that was actually tra- attempting to film this second, second yeah. time. <laughs> oh boy that was a funny one i um, heard that story Oh my god, it was so good. The what now? I haven't heard that story. Oh, so we met up at um, Dasher Park yeah. off of 41. Okay, yeah. And we were going to film a video, and everybody was going to meet up and just follow us around while we shot a video. Yeah. And we were all there first, and, and he lived right around the corner. Yeah. And he was late, so when he went to go pull up, he hit one of those yellow balls that that divides like yeah. the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. the intersection yeah. like, for a roundabout. Uh-huh. And he just barely tapped it. And broke his whole rim, yeah, the tire, and cracked, it was a whole deal. Cracked the whole thing. Had we had to, to, we had to go get like three or four different tires. We had to go. Eventually, we had, we even went and got um, 
Chris yeah, Serenka's wheels. We tried to borrow from the GT350. We tried to borrow from, the, from his dad's GT350. Yeah. Um, we ended up asking a random neighbor that he had that had a Mustang. We were like, would, he didn't really know him. He was like, hey, I live down the street. Can I borrow your wheel? And she was super nice. And she said, yeah. And we borrowed her wheel and drove the car back home. And then I'd take her wheel. <laughs> we had taken off so many car, car Mustang tires that day. It was a pain in the butt. We never ended up shooting that video until yeah. way later. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that sounds like it's a good something. story, though. That sounds like something Carver would have to go But yeah, so yes. I, I shot for uh, Mike's car, and then he was like, hey, my dad's getting a GT350. Let's shoot his. So I yeah. shot his. Um, I shot my buddy Ed, who taught me a lot about. I asked him, every time I have a photography question, Ed's old mm -hmm. school in the photography game. I always ask him, like, hey, like, how do I do this? Yeah. What would you recommend? And, and sometimes he doesn't know the answer. Sometimes he does. But he's helped me a lot. And I shot him a video. He was like, hey, man, I'd like to shoot, you know, get videos of mine. So I shot his. And every time I shoot a video, people were like, oh, I didn't realize you do that. And then yes. they would ask. And then so over time, it just got better just doing it. And I enjoy it. I love it. I love shooting for events and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that's how I got started. Yeah. So with that, do you, do you have one that's kind of your favorite that you've ever done? Favorite car, at least, you've worked with? Yes. So, favorite car in general. So, I would have to say Josh's Fast and the Furious Eclipse. Um, just because yeah. watching those growing up and loving the Eclipse as a kid mm -hmm. and never, you know, I'm not a professional photographer or any of that, in any sense of like that. To get to shoot a car as well done as his. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like, goes full circle. It's so clean. And it's, it's one of my favorite cars in general. And just in, in car legends you know it's it's just an iconic car that that is great so yeah. um i really like his car i really enjoyed filming it and i remember while we were shooting videos of it in moultrie people would ride by in moultrie and be like are y'all shooting for a magazine and i'm like no we're just shooting like we're just shooting having fun yeah but everywhere we ride around every time we do something with him everybody stops and stares yeah. at it takes pictures and, oh it's such a clean and yeah. well done car. i mean That's he wins awards every car show i've been at with him he's won an award yeah so yeah. didn't he win one like literally yesterday he won one he, he won best of show yesterday yep. yeah um we went to the the victory car show and he won i think he won best of show there too like <laughs> it's just a great done car and that was before yeah. The, the victory ones before we had the turbo. Now it's turbo. Jeez. Yeah, oh, now geez. it's so. now it's a full setup. Yeah, now it's now it's turbo. Yeah. So. Um, some good. other cars. Um, obviously, Mike's Mustang is one of my favorite because it was the first one I I shot, and then I've seen how far it's come, and I've been there through all the the builds, and he's always messaged me like, hey, I'm getting this. Yeah. Or, I'm getting this, or do you think I should do this or this? And I've just seen it come from basically stock when actually Josh from up here owned it, and did a few mods to it, and then Mike bought it, mm -hmm. and then going through all these different mods that he's that he's done to it it's been so clean and um his car gets attention everywhere it goes oh, yeah. oh the, god the yeah. color and it's just his Wild. car is almost show like show car quality yeah. he daily mm -hmm. drives the thing yeah it's yep. crazy um so that's one of my favorite the the shooting flames is just insane <laughs> yeah he uh <laughs> it's just everywhere we go it shoots flames and people are just freaking out oh yeah yeah um then uh i would have to say ethan's gt500 ethan robinson Okay, um, yeah. When I shot his video, the car itself is great. Like, I love his car. It's an amazing car. It's even better now. I haven't actually seen it, but it's supposedly I've been talking to his dad, and it's been going through a lot of mods and stuff. Um, but shooting his car, like the experience of shooting his video, I feel like everything just lined up. It was one of my best, in my opinion, my best shot video as far as like the music went with it well. Mm -hmm. All the shots that I had planned out just worked perfectly. Yeah. A lot of times I'll shoot a video, and I, I don't, I don't, take days to shoot videos i, I shoot videos most of the time like three hours yeah. yeah and to shoot a good quality video in three hours dealing with traffic and sunlight it's a challenge it's oh, a yeah. challenge to make sure everything's perfect and if you watch a lot of these youtube videos of like cinematic cars and stuff a lot of them are shot in days yeah, yeah. and they, they're like oh this, today's not perfect we're going away till the next they're day just spread over like and i get that sometimes. but i shoot for average people who yeah. have lives you and just want them to enjoy it they don't have time to Hey, let's meet this day and get one scene. Let's meet this day and get one scene. They want to just yeah. meet up, film it, go about their lives, go yeah. back to their exactly. families or whatever. And that's that's kind of what I that's I found out my niche is people that don't have time to film for three days straight. And yeah. you know, I don't want to film for three days straight. I don't. I yeah. have, I'm busy. Yeah. I have I have a full time job. So yeah. you know, if I meet up on a Saturday and film for three hours and then go, it's awesome. But Ethan's yeah. planned. It worked out and planned so well, and the way everything just flowed and the shots and just one of my favorite videos. Um, and then one of the iconic shots for me was I love Terminators. That was my next favorite car. Like 
It's still my top five mm -hmm. car of all time. Like, if you could give me any car, I pick five. Oh, yeah. Terminator's still up there. Um, and I never rode one. Justin Cool had one back in the day. Yeah. Loved his. Um, never got to ride in it. Never got to ride in anybody's Terminator. Um, and then Sean Beaver hit me up and wanted a, uh, a video for his Terminator. And I think his is Whippled, or I think it's Whippled. And I was like, cool. So we, we shot his video and it turned out great. And uh, I got to ride in it. We were recording the audio for like the, the sound and everything. Mm -hmm. And I went for a ride and it was just so much fun, like getting to shoot it. One of your favorite cars. That, yeah. You know, there ain't many of them around. You don't see them too often. No, you see right. them sometimes. But uh, it was iconic for me to get to ride in my first, you know, Terminator. It was really fun. And then my last favorite car that I would have to mention is Abneil's, he sold it now, but Abneil's Sandbar. So yeah. that car was so fun. The rowboat. So yeah, I was about the to rowboat. say, the rowboat. So we have a, a yeah. funny video of, of us with uh, sticking paddles out the thing and rowing it um, with, with the Pirates of the Caribbean. I think that song. was actually almost exactly a year ago. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty soon. Yeah, I know he just shared it not too yeah. long, yeah. a couple yeah. days ago. I know Peyton reshared it yeah. actually yeah. too. The last yeah, we so got filming that video, I was almost crying. You know, some people weren't there in the moment, and, but I was in, in Peyton's car filming that, and I was crying laughing because just the <laughs> idea of having this 47 horsepower, and I probably got that wrong. I always say it wrong, but I think it's 47 horsepower Something like van that. that if you get too many people on one side, it leans. <laughs> um, me and Peyton went off-roading in it right back here, went off-roading in it, and we literally would like hit a, a tree stump that would normally just make a little bump, and the whole car is like shaking. The car's full wheel drive. Like a stump would probably yeah. like stop it, but it yeah. was so fun. He gets it, we, when he went to car shows. Everybody goes and talks to him oh, yeah. about mm -hmm. his sandbar, and I'm like, it's just a sandbar. Yes, but well, no he one don't knows what that is. is. Yeah, but it's so it was so fun to ride around in it, and we were filming. In fact, we filmed Michael Carver's uh, flame shooting video out the side, out of, the of, side of that yeah. car. So I'm hanging out at the sandbar, and the flames are shooting out, and like I can feel the heat on my face. And then Michael hit it and gun off. And I'm like, I'm going to catch up with him. He's like, I'm trying. And he's flooring it. And we're going like 35, 40 miles an hour. <laughs> and he's in there shifting gears. And he's going. And I'm like, oh. bro, we're, this is it? No, this is as fast as it goes. Yeah. It, was, it was so funny. And then just the, the, the amount of people that, it, that come up and talk to him, like, what is this? Yeah. It, was just, it was such a cool car. And I, I enjoyed it. So. Well, it, it was really cool to see... Uh you know, he brought it out, and then uh, Ashley Grover, Josh Grover, yeah, she, wow. she got one. Yeah, and she dailies like, that. Yeah, oh, she dailies it, and he's just like. I still love seeing it around yeah. town. Yeah, me too. And it's like Abneil got rid of his, and it's just like it's so sad. You don't yeah. see it anymore, and then you see her running around, just like, all right, she took up. The I actually did a light painting with hers. <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. did a rainbow shot. And yeah. it was fun. It was, I, it was really cool doing the rainbow yeah, that shot. That came with out it. really nice. Yeah. Um. But I remember Abneil took everybody for a ride in the sandbar one time, and he piled like seven people in that thing. And, it had and that thing was like leaning just all the way back, and it was so fun. It was just yeah. just a, such a fun car to ride in. Um, and it had like good features. It was like a 95 or whatever year it might have yeah, was. And it had like rear AC, uh -huh. oh, yeah, captain's no, it chairs. It was a fully usable van. It, it was just it was the so size clean. of a Mini Cooper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those are my favorite, probably my top five like favorite cars. That I just, they either either the, they, the car itself was special or the moment of filming it was special, uh -huh. something like that. Mm -hmm. Memories that came in along with it were special. I filmed a lot of great cars, so picking five is is tough. Yeah. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break real quick to bring you the sponsor for today's episode of Local Scene Podcast. Now, living in South Georgia, there's many ways your vehicle can get dirty. Are you tired of always having to drive to a car wash and pay to have your vehicle somewhat cleaned? Well, we have a solution for you. The Detail Genie says your wish is his command. The Detail Genie is a mobile wash detailing small business serving the Valdosta and surrounding areas. Owner-operator Antonio Douglas founded the Detail Genie in 2021 and has built up his client list through hard work, attention to detail, and always outperforming his customers' expectations. The Detail Genie also offers many other things for his clients, such as window tinting and auto styling. If you have a vision of how you'd like your vehicle to look, Antonio will work with you on deciding what the best option is for your wants and needs to help transform your vehicle. Follow them on Facebook at The Detail Genie and give them a call at 229-274-0193 and schedule your appointment today and let The Detail Genie work his magic. Your top five favorite cars you shot with. Do you have any real favorite moments with the community though? Yeah, so... Uh... You know, obviously I have some great moments with all the cars, but there's a few that stick out to me. 
Um, one of them was filming in uh, Columbus, Georgia. Um, a buddy of mine, Brandon Warren, he has a CTSV, super nice. And um, he has a friend, Mike, who has a GTR. And um, they invited me up there to film. And um, he had actually, the, the first time I filmed for him, um, they got into a wreck right after filming the, the Ooh, photo shoot. Yeah. The uh, Jeep had hit the uh, back of the GTR and, and wrecked it. So I told him, I was like, when I come back up there to film the second time, the new GTR that he just got. It's always Jeeps. Yeah, I was about to say, why is it always the Jeeps? <laughs> it's always the Jeeps. Yeah. Um, so whenever we went back up there, the uh, I told him, I was like, this time we're going to do videos. We did photos the first time. And it was really cool. We did some sh cool shots on top of the mountain with mm -hmm. the GTR and the CTSV. Mm -hmm. But when he got his new C the GTR, it's the exact same color, uh, close to the CTSV, so that they're matching. Oh. And um, they're good friends together, so it was really cool to have like two, like one import and one one domestic, one domestic yeah. just sick cars, like they're yeah. just nasty. And um, so we filmed a cool video for them, but we were going up and down Pine Mountain, which is right outside of Columbus, and going down back roads and just going through swerving up and down the roads, going to the top of the mountain. And I told the driver we were in a Jeep Wrangler with no top on it, no nothing. It's freezing. It's December. And I'm barely, my hands are freezing, hanging out the back of this thing. And um, I told him, I was like, it's a two-lane road, but I want to get some shots in the other lane. Yeah. I was like, hey, when you, when you get a chance and it's clear, switch lanes. And we all have walkie-talkies talking to everybody. Yeah. So I change lanes, and I'm not focused on what's coming, because that's his job. I'm focusing on filming. So I'm hanging out the back, I'm filming, and all of a sudden, we just yank back into the other lane. And as soon as we yank back across the yellow line, Ford Escape just passes. Oh. And... I have escaped. it on video. It's really, it's, it's, I, it's a near miss, but I literally turned around super slow and looked at the driver. And I was like, what was that? And he was like, you didn't die. Okay. And I was like, but did you die? <laughs> and the passenger, was escaped. Like, the passenger was like, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it was fun. Um, but I have it on video, but it looks in the video, it doesn't look that close, mm -hmm. but right. that's because I'm in the back of a Ford Ranger. So you got to remember it's way ahead of, it's way long farther closer to the car than me yeah you mean and jeep, i'm filming the, the jeep yeah, is way yeah. closer to the to the escape than me yeah. i'm hanging out the back with a zoom lens on so it's zoomed out so by the time you see it on the camera it's way closer on the uh on actually hitting the actual yeah. jeep side yeah so that was like a near miss that was a crazy moment that i'll never forget um and uh the next one would probably be the toys for tots um film yeah having all those cars come together with a plan and you know there's so many things going against us at the time yeah. and so many yeah uh hurdles and hills we had to jump over and all the planning going up to it and then just to have the video come together with all those people supporting you know toys for tots was, was a lot of fun and then um the filming the supers uh mm -hmm. the two supers with charles and matt um to me there's just two iconic cars um and then to have them in the same video my my theme for the video was like yin and yang because they're both white and black yeah and seeing them two to drive around was just, it was so cool. Seeing the Super in general is cool. And then yeah. to see another new Super with it yeah. is super awesome. I got to ride in them. That was really fun. Oh, I've never yeah. rode in a Super before, so mm -hmm. I got to ride in those. Chuck still owes me a ride. He needs to get that back up and going. Yeah. If he ever, if he <laughs> if he ever gets it back up and running. No, if you can yeah. ever find him. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a family man, so um, it's understandable. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the cool parts about my job, though, when I, when I film. I get, to, I get to ride in all the cars. So, like, yeah. filming for the GTR up in... in, in uh, there, I was riding in the GTR, mm -hmm. riding in the CTSV. I was hanging out of a GTR, doing rollers for a CTSV, and then I would switch to the CTSV and hang out of that and do rollers <laughs> for a GTR. So to go up and down the mountains yeah. in two iconic cars and two yeah, that's pretty cool. Sick that's, cars. It just, yeah, I got to do that. and I got paid to do it. Like, yeah, I, like, I can't really do better than that's that. That's a good yeah, day on the awesome. job. Right I, mean, there. I, I mentioned earlier, riding in the the, the Terminator. Yep. Riding in the Supras. Yeah. There's some really cool cars that I've got to be a part of and cool owners that I've met. Yeah. Just great moments. I love it. Yeah, well, that's I've, that's part of my favorite is just is the people I meet and the the, mm -hmm. the things I have mm -hmm. while filming. It just it opens up doors that wouldn't never had a chance. Oh yeah, right. So yeah, and I've seen a bunch of you know, obviously all your car related media and yeah. stuff like that. But I've also seen some underwater shots. Yeah, and that stuff is just it's, it's crystal crazy. clear. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's uh, crazy. Those are uh, free dive videos. So I um, I certified free diver um it's not scuba diving mm -hmm. free diving is uh, breath hold diving so you're just holding your breath so there's no equipment there's no I mean, you have a wetsuit on which the wetsuit really just helps for um keeping your breath because it's hard to, if you're in most of the mm -hmm. springs are really cold water yeah 
Um, so and it keeps you warmer. A keeps bit. you warmer, which allows you to hold your breath. Because if you're in cold water and you're in like shock of, yeah, you, yeah. it's hard to hold your breath for long periods of time when you're when you're cold. Um, so that the that keeps you warm. It also helps you if you're like free diving. They have pads on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're hitting like on uh, coral reefs or whatever, yeah, just you're not keep, scraping keep and stuff. You're cutting up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they also have a pad in the chest for for spear fishing. Mm -hmm. So you put the the spear fish against that pad and you pull the the the, the strings back basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, the cords and um, like that's how crossbow. you aim. That's how you a big big giant crossbow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how you do that and it's really tough. People like get in the water with the spear gun and they just they're trying to pull it back and they don't realize how strong those things. Yeah. Especially if you do like so that most of them have like two to three strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Depends on the power of the, the how far you want to shoot or how big of a fish you want to shoot. Um, so you pull them back one's not that bad. The second one gets a little tougher and that third yeah. one, the third you're one in the water just, just ugh. like struggling. Like if, I mean, if you're a small person, you're not pulling back some yeah, of the spear no. guns that I've, I've had to, you know, had the ability to shoot. Yeah. So, um, it makes a lot of fun and spear fishing in general is, is kind of foreign to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So spear fishing or free diving in general is foreign to people. Uh, but free diving is actually, if you understand the science of it is really, it's really simple. It's, it's holding your breath. Um, you don't have to deal with a lot of the complications that scuba divers have to deal with because they're not breathing uh, real air. Yeah. They're breathing, you know, whatever, nitrogen yeah. or CO2, whatever, not CO2. Um, the compressed, compressed oxygen, air, yeah. um, Compressed oxygen, uh, I'm probably getting butchered with, I'm not a scuba diver, so I don't know what they breathe, but I know they have some nitrogen mixes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I'm breathing my own air, so yeah. I don't have those issues with the bends or going down too deep. Or like yeah. that. As long as I come back up before I pass out, Good. then i'm good yeah, yeah. um that, i've never passed out yet given, no. um but uh yeah i got started with me and my brother um we started going down to the springs down in madison and it's 25 feet deep and i'm very competitive and we would try to touch one rock at like 10 feet and we try to touch another rock at 15 feet and eventually we were maxing out you know 25 feet and then we yeah. went back and started studying and found out that you can go to school for it like a, a class and we went to florida free divers down in fort lauderdale we got our our, les, our license and passed, and they make you do tests and watch videos, and yeah. they teach you about water confidence skills, and they they'll make you go down with no fins, and they'll make you you know, and they, you have to go down to at least sixty feet. Mm -hmm. You got to hold your breath for like three minutes, um, stuff like that. So, and holding your breath for three minutes is not hard. Mm -hmm. Like it, with a little bit of understanding of how it works and how your 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 you get those contractions when you're holding your breath. Um, a lot of people think that that contraction is you um, running, out, running of out of air, and it's not. So our bodies are actually spoiled for air. Like they're they they're so they're spoiled rotten. Really? We, how often do you hold your breath till you can't hold it no more? Yeah. yeah. It's very rarely. So most people will hold their breath for a minute and be like, oh, I got I got to breathe, and they they got all these contractions, and then they'll let it out. Yeah. If you actually hold it past that contraption, you're not gonna die. You'll be fine. Really? You know it it sucks. And people think that, oh, if you hold your breath for 10 minutes or 7 minutes or whatever the records are, um, I know people that hold 6 and 7 minutes, and I've asked them, I was like, do you get contractions? Like, does it, or do, you, do you get a contraction at 6 minutes? Or do you get a contraction? Like, do you feel like you have to urge to breathe at 5 minutes? Like, when do you, is yours just delayed? And he was like, no, I get an urge to breathe at a minute. He said, but I ignore it. And then I ignored it. So you have to learn. So you can't just ignore all of them, obviously. It's, at some yeah, point it's mind over body. It's mind yeah. over body at certain points. It's, it's a... Um, but it's also understanding um, some people have different, like my fingertips get itchy. Mm -hmm. So like whenever I'm at the edge of my breath holding, I can feel my fingers like starting to tingle. And that's when I know like I'm at the end. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's when I'm at my, I need to come up. Yeah. Um, some people um, have different reactions to it. So understanding and practicing in a safe area, um, understanding your breath holds can help you. But people that hold their breath longer, don't not, it, experience those 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 wheels to want to breathe yeah they just ignore them right so they get them at the same time everybody else does most people don't have the body strength or the will to push through to push through it because they they think if i push through this i drown yeah right. and they don't understand the science behind it and um so when i dive down I've, my record's like 81 feet for free diving um when i do that um i i get the urge to breathe at a minute yeah, yeah. and i get you know I'm, I'm not down there it doesn't take me that long to do 81 feet um, just because I got the fins on and I'm yeah, you can get down in the videos yeah. when you watch me dive people always like it doesn't look that deep But you have to realize I'm, I'm five eight five nine. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm stretching out my hands when I'm diving that makes me like six three six yeah. four whatever plus the fins I'm also how much more I have two foot fins on yeah, so now I'm like seven four eight four something yeah. like that and in those videos when I'm recording 
you also got to think that I have a, a GoPro stick that's a foot and a half, two foot long that's yeah. out in front of yeah. me aiming back. So I'm a good ten to nine to ten feet long yeah. diving down. And while I'm diving, every time my body goes up one body length, I'm ten feet. So ten yeah. feet, ten feet. So people don't realize if I was in a ten foot pool where somebody else would normally dive at, if I just dive down, I'm automatically when I go into water, I'm automatically hitting the bottom. Yeah. And I haven't yeah. even really come completely under yet. So I'm covering a lot of space because I'm really yeah, long. Because you're stretched out. Man. So in those videos, when you see me with the camera reached out in front of me, like I'm covering a lot of space, and I'm with those fins, you can you can really fly through oh, the water. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, went, I've dove in so many places. I've dove in caves, and Itchitutney Springs has some really cool caves that you can dive in. They're super clear, and they have a sign at the bottom of them that most people never see, and it's a it's a sign with a Green Reaper. It says "Do not pass," mm -hmm. and these caves go for miles. Um, but GoPro GoPro has filmed commercials there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, this springs all over the place, and it's just a lot of fun to the competitiveness of diving down deep and the freedom, and it's just this is it's just a lot of a lot of cool stuff to see down there, and no one else does it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it sounds fun. I know a lot of you get a lot of good pictures and video out of it. Yeah. But, so yeah. what uh, what's your plan for ADM Media? Are you going to expand? Like, what's yeah, your five year um, plan? I don't have a necessarily a five-year plan. Uh, I just have like goals that I want to reach. Like I'd like to. My first goal when I started doing photography and stuff was like when I actually wanted to start charging for it and doing other people's cars. Is I wanted to be known as like the camera guy. Like mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to be like when someone saw me. Like oh, if you want pictures, go to that guy. Yeah. If you want videos, go to that guy. And that's and I. I I don't know if I'm there yet. I feel like I, I'm I'm close to it, but in the local scene at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, Local scene, I'd but I'd like to expand there. that farther out where people from like Tallahassee or Thomasville or Jacksonville yeah. have, you know, get a hold of my content and yeah. see it. Um, I'd like to get my YouTube farther up. You know, the algorithms for YouTube are tough to, to fight. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'd like to get my YouTube a little bit going. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be no YouTube famous person, but just to get some some get some some views and attraction yeah. on that. So yeah. I don't feel like um, you know, I'm like, I got I got some videos that are really good views, like um, Ethan's GT500. That video is like twenty thousand views. Mm -hmm. um, Keith's uh, Crown Vic is at twenty three thousand views Jesus. on just YouTube. On TikTok, it's at like sixty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Facebook, it's got like thirty or forty thousand. Yeah, that was my, my first video that kind of went viral. Yeah, was Keith's uh, Crown Vic, which is is a lightning swap Crown Vic. It's, it's insane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would like to add another camera for one for video, one for photos. I would like to uh, do more real estate videography and mm -hmm. photography, like, you know, just to get more work going in that way. But uh, I don't really have, like, a five-year plan much. You know, it's still a side gig for me. Yeah. I don't see it going full-time anytime soon. Yeah, because I was going to say, you've been at Lowe's for, what? 15 years. 15 years now? Yeah. yeah. So. so, I enjoy it. I haven't missed a meal yet, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's sure. what matters. Yeah. But. Well, hey, that's uh, that's pretty cool. It's good to you know learn about and band behind the camera. Yeah, it's good I, to have you on this side of it for once. It was fun. I, yeah. A little Especially bit different on this side. Filming anyway. Yeah. yeah, it's different on this side, but uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is your one and done, so don't worry about it. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Make um, it easy on you, but we appreciate you know everyone in the local scene. We appreciate yeah. everything you do, man. I love I love being a part of it. It's yeah, fun. it's great. All right, well, Sam. You got anything else to add, buddy? Uh, I think we're good. It's nice always learning about the man behind the camera. Always nice to learn about, you know, the kind of role people play in the local car scene. So, yeah. yeah. Pleasure to have you. All right, man. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, guys. That's it for today's episode. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good social media stuff. And we'll see you on the next one.